ng Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ang mga kabataan. Gabay ko po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen. Good day, Senior High School students. I am Ma'am Rochelle G. Utimeriz, and I will be your guide today in understanding the world of research. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the parts of a written research methodology. Here is the most essential learning competency we want to achieve by the end of this lesson. Presents written research methodology. Picture this scenario. Julius is a treasure hunter, or so he claims. In order to establish he really is a treasure hunter, he has to be able to find treasure. At the moment, however, he knows of no location where treasure might possibly be. Now, think of how you might answer these questions. First, what is Julius' problem? Second, what does he need in order to solve his problem? Lastly, how might he obtain the answer to solve his problem? In the given scenario, we can say that Julius' problem is that he has not found treasure to prove he is really a treasure hunter. In order to establish his problem, he needs to know general locations where treasure might be found. These information may come in the form of pirate stories, gazette, and rumors or documents such as journals. Once he has found places where possible treasure might be, he can choose to interview locals who could give even more specific details as to where the treasure might be. Julius treasure hunting dilemma reflects what the research writing causes is. You begin with a problem that needs to be answered. Then you think of how of what kind of information you needed to solve the problem. Finally, you take the necessary steps to obtain the information. Research writing begins with a problem. If there is no problem, there is no need for research. Your research problem needs to be clear and specific. It also needs to have an impact on a group of people to be deemed worthy of research. In the first chapter of your research paper, which is aptly called The Problem in Its Setting, you will discuss comprehensively what your problem is. You will explain how that problem came to be and who are affected by that problem. Suppose that you are a barangay captain. Someone reports that there is a broken stoplight in one of your main roads. What questions would you ask to understand the problem and its setting. Think about it for a minute. You would, of course, ask what makes the stoplight broken? Have the lights gone out? Are the lights working but blinking uncontrollably? Has the street light's actual structure been damaged? How long has the stoplight been broken? These are the details you need to know in order to understand fully what the problem looks like. Next, 
you will consider the severity of the problem. When there is a broken street light, who are affected and why are they affected? Since broken stoplight can cause heavy traffic and are also a threat to safety, you can conclude that the problem is significant. Aside from discussing the problem and its setting and its significance, you will need to know what your scope and the limitation is. Let's consider again the stoplight problem earlier. As Barangay Captain, what things you would say are within the scope or concerns of repairing the stoplight? Think about it for a minute. Here are some possible things that might be within the scope of the matter. First, who will do the repairs? Second, how will the repairs be done? Third, what materials and tools are needed to do the repairs? Fourth, how much will the repairs cost? Now, let's apply this analogy to research. The scope determines to what extent you will investigate the problem. Any boundaries that you will not include in your scope are called delimitations. We can say that in the stoplight scenario that a possible delimitation is that the repairs will not into consideration how big or small the stoplight is. One more thing you will need to consider in this chapter are the list of terms that would need to be defined. You would want to make sure that those reading your research understand the words you would be using in your paper. These may mean providing the definitions of some words ahead of time, especially words that are not common or too technical. Let's consider again the stoplight situation. What terms would you think would be relevant to the situation? Think about it for a minute. Perhaps words that might have popped up in your mind would be electronic-related terms like circuit and wiring, which are words related to the repairs of the stoplight. These are the words that may need to be defined in order to understand the problem. Let's consider the next chapter of your research paper, which is your review of related literature. The review of related literature is that section of the paper where you mention different sources of information, such as journal articles, research reports, newspaper articles, documentaries, legal documents, in order to establish a deeper understanding of the problem you are investigating. By reviewing the related literature, you are able to find out the latest trends, developments, and theories on the topic, as well as any gaps or unanswered questions that might still exist. Let's go back to our stoplight situation. Do you think there are any literature that would be relevant to the situation? If so, what might it be? Think about it for a minute. What did you think of? Possible sources of information that may have come to mind would be a handbook or manual on how to repair stoplights or records detailing stoplight repairs that have been done in the last few years. Now, let's consider the third chapter of your research, which is the methods. Methods refer to the approach that you as a researcher 
would take together or and analyze the data needed in order to answer questions about the problem. In the qualitative approach, you would want to use the methods that would allow you to form descriptions about the problem or situation that you are researching on. Methods such as observing and interviewing are two such methods that would allow you to collect data that you need. One necessary detail you, win, you would need to consider when thinking about your research method is your sample and the sampling technique. Recall that a sample refers to the representation of your population. In many circumstances, the population is very big and almost impossible to include in a single research. Therefore, only a, a portion of the population is included in the interview. Now, let's return to our stoplight scenario. At the moment, you already know that the stoplight is broken and you've considered existing sources of information to know how stoplight repairs are done as well as how many times the stoplight has been repaired. Now, consider how, might, how you might get the answers to the questions you asked earlier when, Andy, when identifying the problem and setting. Whom would you ask if you want to find out how long the stoplight has been broken? Whom you would ask if you want to know what is needed to fix the broken stoplight? Notice that the answers can come from a variety of sources. The first and second questions can be answered by the residents in the area who may have seen when the stoplight first stopped working. The third question can be answered by someone experienced in stoplight repairs and maintenance. For the first and second question, you do not need to ask every resident in the area because that would take too long. So, you would consider just a sample from the population to find out the answer. For the third question, you will not need to interview every single repairman out there to find out the answer. Only a sample is needed to get the answer that you need. Alright, so let's do a recap of everything we have talked about so far. First, the first step in writing research is to identify the problem and its setting. In this chapter, you will describe the problem in its context, explain its significance, identify your scope and the limitation, and define terms related to the study. Second, the second step in writing research is to conduct a review of related literature. This means looking for pertinent sources of information to understand the nature of the problem more. The third step in writing research is to choose your methods. This involves not only deciding on your data gathering and analysis techniques, but also in identifying your sources of information via sampling. Let's check whether you understood today's lesson. You have to indicate which part can be found in the problem and its setting, in the review of related literature, or under methods. To answer, you may use the comment section below and let's start. First, the issue or topic of the study. Five second timer starts now. Time's up. 
The correct answer is the problem and its setting. Number two, scope and the limitation. Five second timer. Time's up. Very good. The answer is still the problem and its setting. Third, terms to be used. Five second timer. Alright, let us check your answers. Good job, students. The correct answer is the problem and its setting. You are all doing great. Let's proceed with number four. Related literature. Five second timer. I guess you all get the correct answer. This is part of the review of related literature. Last item, related studies. Five second timer. Time's up. Great job. Related studies are still part of the review of related literature. All right. I hope that you have learned a lot about the research methodology. And that wraps up our lesson for today. Again, this is your live streaming teacher, Ma'am Rochelle G. Utenaris. See you next time, senior high school students.